Hi guys, AWS Directory Service has been around for a little while, um, comes up on the exam every now and then, sometimes a bit more than other exams, so it really depends what you get on the day. But I definitely want to cover this one off in a reasonable amount of detail so that you definitely understand it. Now, the key thing is there's three different services underneath AWS Directory Service that I want to talk about today. There's the AWS Managed Microsoft Active Directory, there's Simple AD, and there's AD Connector. And you need to understand all three of these. You need to understand the differences between them, and you need to understand when you would use one over another one. So first off, I've just taken this AWS diagram. I didn't want to try and recreate this myself because there's quite a lot going on there, but it just articulates a bit about the AWS Microsoft Active Directory. So this is a managed Microsoft Active Directory within the AWS cloud. Now, one of the things is you can set up what's called a trust relationship. Now, I don't know if you come from a Microsoft background or not. I do, I did a lot of work with Active Directory, but many people will be coming into this and they don't really understand it. But what this means is you set up something called a trust relationship between two Active Directories, and it enables users in one Active Directory to be able to access resources in another Active Directory. So that's simply all it is. It's just a, a trust relationship between those two Active Directories. So with AWS Microsoft AD, you can set up a trust relationship with your on-premises Active Directory. You might do this because you have your users here and you don't want to recreate them here. You'd rather use a trust relationship. Now, from a security and governance perspective, that means you're keeping your users in one place, but you're extending their reach. You're extending their ability to authenticate to services somewhere else. Now, people might like this because it's a single set of governance in terms of the user accounts. They're in one place. It also means that security credentials like the passwords or the hashes of the passwords are not stored here. They're only stored on premises in your Active Directory that you manage yourself. So you can then access services within AD, within AWS, excuse me. And one of the things you can do, for instance, with your Windows EC2 instances, is you can join those to the AWS Microsoft Active Directory. So they can become computers that are part of the AWS Microsoft AD and are managed by the Microsoft Active Directory. You can also connect to applications and services within AWS, such as WorkDocs and Workspaces. You could connect to a AD Federation Services server to then extend authentication through to another Active Directory, maybe in Azure AD, for example. So this slide gives you a quite a lot of bit of information about what you can do with Microsoft AD. Let's talk, look at a bit more of the background detail. So it's a fully managed AWS service on AWS infrastructure. It's the best choice if you have more than 5,000 users or you need to set up a trust relationship. So if, you're, if you have a large user base, you want to have the full AWS managed AD or if you need to set up a trust relationship, it's an and or because you might have the scenario where you have plus 5,000 users and you also need to set up trust relationships with other directory services. So this is the service you need to use for those two scenarios. It runs on a Windows server. You can perform things like schema extensions. It works with SharePoint, SQL Server, .NET apps, lots more. So critically, you can set up those trust relationships to extend authentication from on-premises Active Directories into the AWS cloud. On-premise users and groups can access resources in either domain then using SSO. So single sign-on. It does require a VPN or a Direct Connect connection. It can also be used as a standalone Active Directory. So you don't have to set up a trust relationship. You can use it as just your one and only Active Directory configuration in the AWS cloud. When it's used as a standalone Active Directory, users can access third-party applications such as Microsoft Office 365 through Federation. So we saw that in the diagram where you use Federation Services Server. The next service is Simple AD. So this is not a Microsoft Active Directory, but it's an, a simple Active Directory. So it's something similar, but with fewer features. It's inexpensive. It's Active Directory compatible with common directory features. 
So it's standalone, fully managed directory on the AWS cloud. It's generally the least expensive option, and it's the best choice if you have less than 5,000 users and you don't need advanced Active Directory features. It's powered by the Samba 4 Active Directory compatible server. You can create users and control access to applications on AWS, and it provides a subset of the features provided by AWS Microsoft Active Directory. Features include that you can manage user accounts and groups, apply group policies, use Kerberos-based SSO, and support joining Linux or Windows-based EC2 instances. It's also compatible with Workspaces, WorkDocs, WorkMail, and QuickSight. And you can sign into the AWS Management Console with simple AD user accounts to manage AWS resources. It's available in two editions. So you have small, which is up to 500 users or approximately 2,000 objects. And then you have large, which is up to 5,000 users or approximately 20,000 objects. AWS creates two directory services and DNS servers on two different subnets within an AZ, so it's highly available. It does not support these features. Now, these are mostly features that you associate with Microsoft Active Directory. So we've got DNS dynamic updates, schema extensions, multi-factor authentication, communication over secure LDAP, PowerShell AD commandlets, and FSMO role transfer. You don't need to know what all of those are. Just understand that it is a simple version of Active Directory, so it doesn't support lots of these features. Most of those are not going to come up in an exam question. Perhaps schema extensions could do, so just be aware that it doesn't support schema extensions. And it's not compatible with RDS SQL Server. It also does not support trust relationships with other domains, and this is another thing that could come up in an exam question. Again, you should use the AWS managed Microsoft Active Directory for that instead. For the third service here, we have AD Connector. So AD Connector gives you the ability to connect your existing self-managed Active Directory. So this is most likely going to be on-premises, though it could be running in EC2 as well. And you need to connect that into AWS so that you have the ability to sign into the management console to access EC2 resources and so on. So you can still seamlessly join your Windows EC2 instances. Oops, something went wrong with the slide there. But you can connect your EC2 instances to your on-premises Active Directory domain using AD Connector. You have federated sign-in to the AWS Management Console by mapping Active Directory identities here to AWS IAM roles. So you map an AD identity or a user account to an IAM role in the AWS Management Console, and that user then has the privileges that are assigned to that role. So you can also sign into these applications as well, Workspaces, WorkDocs, WorkMail, by using your Active Directory credentials. Now, again, you have to use a VPN or Direct Connect connection. So let's have a look at a bit more background. This is a directory gateway for redirecting directory requests to your on-premise Active Directory. It eliminates the need for directory synchronization and the cost and complexity of hosting a federation infrastructure. It connects your existing on-premise AD to AWS. So this is the best choice when you want to use an existing AD with AWS services. It comes in two sizes. So you've got the small for up to 500 users and the large for up to 5,000 users. Now your VPC must be connected to your on-premise network via VPN or Direct Connect. When users log in to AWS applications, AD connects a forward sign-in request to your on-premise Active Directory domain controllers. You can also join EC2 instances to your on-premise AD through AD Connector, and you can log into the AWS Management Console. So just to compare these particular two, so AD Connector on the left and Simple AD on the right. For AD Connector, you have to have an existing Active Directory, whereas with Simple AD, it is an Active Directory itself. So it's a standalone AD based on Samba. With AD Connector, existing Active Directory users can access AWS assets via IAM roles. Whereas with Simple AD, this supports user accounts, groups, group policies, and domains within the database. AD Connector supports multi-factor authentication using Radius. Simple AD does not support MFA, but it does use Kerberos-based single sign-on, and it also doesn't support trust relationships. Just one more slide. And this is to understand some of the use cases that might put you towards one of these services. 
So starting at the top, we've got the directory service for Microsoft AD. So again, this is a managed full Microsoft Active Directory running in AWS on Windows Server 2012 R2. This is when you have an enterprise that wants hosted Microsoft Active Directory, or you need LDAP for Linux apps. So remember, this is where you have large user bases, maybe plus 5,000 users, or you need to have that trust relationship between your on-premises Active Directory and your AWS Active Directory. Then we have AD Connector. So this allows on-premises users to log in to AWS services with existing AD credentials and allows EC2 instances to join the Active Directory domain. So you use this when you need single sign-on for on-premises employees and for adding EC2 instances to the domain. And lastly, we have Simple AD, which is a low-scale, low-cost Active Directory implementation based on Samba. And you'd use that when you have a simple user directory requirement or you need just simple LDAP compatibility. So that gives you a few different use cases. There's one more design pattern that I didn't mention before. And that's where an organization has an Active Directory on-premise and they add a new Active Directory domain controller, so another domain controller for their Active Directory in AWS, maybe on EC2. And that means that they can extend their on-premises Active Directory into the AWS cloud. The advantage of that means they then have low latency authentication services within the AWS cloud itself. The downside to that is they have to replicate information into the cloud. So there's synchronization happening with their database, their user credentials are going into that instance that's on AWS. So just bear in mind in case an exam question comes up, um, there might be certain circumstances where an organization or a security department within an organization doesn't want those user identities to be synchronized into AWS. And that might then require AWS directory service or AD connector. What I want to do now is just head over to the AWS management console and show you where the AWS directory service is and see how we can actually configure this service. So I'm in the AWS management console. Let's go to services, security, identity and compliance, and we find directory service. So within directory service, we don't have anything set up, so we can choose set up directory. And this is where we have some options. You'll also see there's Amazon Cognito user pools. We cover Cognito in another, another section of the course, but with Cognito user pools, you can also add that user registration and sign in features typically to mobile applications. So what we've been focusing on in this section is AWS Managed Microsoft AD, Simple AD and AD Connector. So if I just choose next, we can see that for the AWS Managed AD, we then get to choose from two different editions and we then have to put in some information. So for instance, we'd put in dctlabs.com for the fully qualified domain name, and then it might be just dctlabs for the NetBIOS name. And then you put in some credentials and you can set that up and you can see what the cost is per month. So this is gonna cost 100 bucks a month, or it costs about 350 for the bigger enterprise edition. So I'm just gonna cancel out of there, go back to setup directory, and then for simple AD, so remember this is the Linux Samba Active Directory compatible server and much cheaper. So you can see this one is 57 US dollars a month for the small or 172 dollars for the large. And that's in, you know, the Sydney region depends on where you are, which region it might be different. And again, it's asking for very much the same information, a fully qualified domain name, a NetBIOS name, and then some credentials. So let's cancel out of that one. And then lastly, we have the AD connector. So this is described as a proxy for redirecting directory requests to your existing Microsoft AD without caching any information in the cloud. So that's a key thing to remember there. Nothing is cached in the cloud. If we choose next, again, we have a couple of different sizes and the pricing seems to be about the same as for the simple AD. So $57 and $172. So you will choose your option and you can type a description or otherwise you click on next and you have to specify a VPC, your subnets, and then you get through to the fully qualified domain name, NetBIOS name, some DNS addresses and so on. So that's how you configure these services. We're not gonna actually create any of these as part of this lab, 
but I just wanted to show you where it all is. So hopefully that gives you a bit more information now. I know it's a little bit complex, but just try to understand the differences between these services and the scenarios in which you would use one over another.